Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 174. Now we left off in our last tutorial, we were actually instantiating our first uh, player mesh, which was the fat guy and we also had it uh, telling it to face forward for us. Uh, this tutorial will start getting it to switch that when we hit this little button here, it switches between the male models and the female models. So let's go ahead and we'll just head into Bono Develop. And just for a quick test, we're just going to switch the path. So we're now calling the female model path. And we're also calling the female model index to make sure we're getting the proper names. And let's just go into Unity. And we'll start it up. And if we look at our character mount for the array, uh, the first one that should load up is the hot cube. So we started up and there we go. And we notice because the pivot points aren't the same, uh, it doesn't actually spawn exactly on the uh, right spot. But we actually have a script for our offset that we can attach to it to fix that. And we're missing the animation component to our, our cube. And that's actually okay. We'll add them, I guess, a little bit later on. What it's trying to do is call the idle and there's no animation on it so it's going to err on that. So we know it's capable of loading it but let's put it in code where when we hit the button it loads it up for us. Now there's a couple ways we can do that. We can actually tie the gender changer uh, basically what's called coupling to the character mount so we get a reference to the character mount and call functions in the character mount to change it. But the more and more I use Unity, the more I, I come to hate that method. And what I, what I really want to do is actually just use the broadcast messenger that we've had for, God, I think we started using that maybe around uh, the 30s in this video. And we're just going to do that with this one as well. So we're going to come down to where we click the button and uh, tell it to change, which is almost down. And we're going to use that messenger class. And right here is where you put the type, but we don't need that. All we need is to broadcast and then the string that we're going to broadcast, which I'm going to say uh, toggle gender. And then, of course, if we had any parameters, we could enter them after this here, but we don't. And there's also the messenger mode we could use, which is down here. And by default, it requires a listener and later on you can switch it to do not require a listener but I generally like it to require a listener uh, especially while I'm developing because uh, if it doesn't have a listener you'll get that little error message but I'm going to come back into my player model customization script and we're going to create the on enable and on disable events so these are both public they do not return anything And we'll want to add the listener here. So, messenger. And we don't need a data type, but we do need to add a listener. Uh, the message we're going to listen to, I'm just going to cut and paste it in. And the function we want to listen to, uh, the function we want in this script to listen to it. Now, when I'm adding listeners, I like to add the on uh, before it. So I'm just going to quickly change that and then I'm just going to come up here and paste it in. And we'll also create the disable. Now it has been a while since I've used this and I believe it's on disable, but let's find out. Uh, the vitals class I know had a listener attached to it. Uh, let me just see, it was under HUD classes and the vital bar. And let's just find on enable and on disable. So I was right. So we'll just go ahead and just directly paste that name in there. And here we're going to want to remove the listener. So messenger dot remove listener. And we'll just cut and paste this part in. And that should be pretty much everything we need. 
So let's just save that off. We'll see if we have any errors after it recompiles. And it does not look like it. So we'll just start it up and we'll see what happens. So we got the mail model. And we'll hover over the sex changer. And when we hit it, nothing happens. And that's because we don't actually have any code in our instantiate character model to switch. So what I'm going to do is come down here and say if. And the variable we're using is use mail model. So if we're using the mail model, instantiate this one. Else, instantiate this one, which is what we're going to use to grab the female models. And then we're going to want to call this function. All right, so that should pretty much clear everything up. Let's go back in. We'll re recompile, see if there's any errors. There were none, so I'll just clear it, hit play. And we get the first male model. And when we hit this, uh, we're getting the, the cube. Now we have to go through like we did before and get rid of all the other models. So we'll just head back into model develop. All right, so we've already actually got code for that as well. So we'll head into the changing room and it'll be the first part of our instantiate character mesh where we actually go through and grab the children and delete them, which is right down here. So we could just cut and paste that and just make any modifications that we need there. And I'll put them right at the very beginning here. And we'll just quickly go through it. So we're going to look uh, for a transform.child count. So we're going to see if we have any models under our character mount. And if we do, we're just going to go through and destroy them all. Uh, I don't see any errors there, so we'll just go ahead and try that out. We'll let it recompile. There was no errors on recompiling, so we'll start this up. And now, hopefully, when we change sex, the old model is destroyed. And there we go. So let's stop that off. And... Actually, while we're in here, let's take our detect leaks uh, script that we've went and got off the wiki, which I'm not sure if I've actually added it to anything or into a different folder. I might have. Uh, it should be in here somewhere. I was probably under utility. Detect leaks. And I'll just add it to the main camera. And now when we start it up, uh, and we start changing sex, we'll just pay attention to the game objects and well, pretty much everything just to make sure that we don't have any memory leaks. And we don't. As you see, there's a lot of game objects attached to our player and that's because of all the bones and everything else that we have in there. But that's okay. As we see, when we switch back and forth, uh, nothing's actually increasing. So everything's working good there. So let's go ahead and instantiate our one model that we're using for the, well, the first female one, which was our hot cube. Oops, that's the males. Uh, so we're just going to go and just drag that on here. And I'm going to add the offset script, the mesh offset to it. And after I add it, I'll reapply it. So it should turn blue again. Now I'm just going to get rid of it. And when we start it up, and switch over to the female cube or the female model I'm gonna go ahead and click it and I'm gonna start adjusting these offsets so I'm gonna to want to bring it up to oh I'd say a little bit lower right about there and uh, what if we just went 0 0.5 0 0.5 looks great so I'll select that model and in my Y I'll just put 0.5 and uh, we're gonna have to actually add it in script to go ahead and use that so we'll come back into our player model customization and we've already actually added the code I believe it was in the hair part but we'll just quickly add it again So this script is called Mesh Offset, I believe. Uh, let me just take a look. Mesh Offset, yes. So we're going to create a Mesh Offset. Uh, 
and I'm just going to call it ammo is equal to character mesh dot get component. The component we want is the mesh offset. And then we're just going to check to make sure that this component exists. So if MO is equal to null, which means it does not exist, uh, we're just going to return. We'll get out of there. Actually, no. We'll see if it does not exist, which means, or sorry, if it does not equal null, which means it does exist, then we're going to grab its values. So mo dot, and we want positional offset. So mo dot transform dot position dot x is equal to mo dot, and I forget the name of it already. Positional offset or pos offset dot pos offset dot x. Uh, we're going to need curly braces here because there's more than one line. And I'm actually just going to cut and paste this for Y and Z. And we'll make sure we'll get these over here as well. We'll save that off. Uh, I guess we'll actually get rid of this, the air that we're getting here too. And we'll just check to see if that uh, component exists. Since we don't need actually, since we have an easier way of getting a reference to it by calling its animation or character game object dot animation, let's actually make the check to see if it exists. So if character mesh dot get component, uh, the component we want is the animation component does not equal null. Oops. Then we'll call it idle animation. So there we go. We should be able to offset it and get rid of the animation here that we're getting. Uh, except we have a few errors here. Uh, cannot modify the value. Oh, uh, I've, I've done this wrong. Uh, with vector threes with C sharp, it's, you can't really do it that way. And even then, we're actually making the mistake of trying to replace the position. What I was actually aiming for is I wanted to add the offset to uh, whatever our current position is. But like I said, in C sharp, we can't do it that way. Uh, you can read up a little bit more of it online. But uh, if we want to get it positioned right, what we're going to have to do is say mo.transform.position is equal to a new vector3. And then fill in our vector three here. So I'm just going to cut and paste this. And I'm actually going to break this down into multiple lines. So I'm just going to hit enter, paste it in for X, do another one for Y and another one for Z. And we'll just change the variables here. And I'm just going to actually say, well, I guess we could have actually just did the whole line. This is actually what I want. And we want it tabbed in. And we want to get rid of those semicolons. We want to switch them actually to colons. And let's go ahead and tab it in. I'm st stuck in the IntelliSense. Whoops, I'm sorry, there's none after Z. But let's tab these in. There we go. And I have one for each line. And actually, let's get rid of the old ones. And because it is one command, we no longer need the curly brace. Uh, as a general rule, if I don't need the curly braces, I just don't put them in unless I need them for uh, uh, some sort of formatting. But that all looks good to me. Let's save that off and we'll give it one more try. So we'll let it recompile. These errors should go away. And let's start it back up. 
And let's hit the sex change. There we go, it's now spotting in the right spot for us. So that's how we're gonna be using our mesh offset for all of our models and also the little items that we can add to our character. But that's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.